now the come coming for the abdominal pain we have the 12th reason the seventh reason i'm going to come here is a intestinal obstruction how the pain will be looking the cramping colicky abdominal pain come and goes it's come and goes what's the reason for obstruction if you come to see the intestinal obstruction we come to the intestinal design this is the stomach it's a large intestine is a small intestines so if there is obstruction means see this is a hollow viscous there is obstruction in some part the food cannot pass from here to here that's caused the obstruction so what the pain will be it will be cramping pain colicky abdominal pain comes and goes whenever the food is trying to pass out from here to here the pain will come then it will pass away so whenever there is a peristalsis like peristalsis means it's a constriction of the small intestine that's the movements of the intestines so whenever there is a movements of the intestine you will be getting a pain it may be associated with visible floating that means whenever there is a obstruction here this intestine will get dilated so because of dilatation you will be feeling the floating of the bowel and bowel noise kar 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 bowel noise will be there as the nausea and vomiting and if the symptom is not sustained if the system is sustained again the obstruction is complete that means if the symptom is the pain is sustained like it's not coming and going is sustained so this complete is gone for the complete obstruction near complete so the inability to pass the gas main thing the patient is not passing flatus patient is going to the doctors with abdominal pain the first question will be asked are you passing the flatus that means the patient is passing a gas itself will be so happy like the patient don't have any obstruction problem so the first question will be the doc from the doctor is are you passing the flatus so after to rule out the obstruction the patient is passing flatus as well as stool okay we are happy there is no obstruction symptoms or if the it's not full obstruction okay so that doubt will be cleared here now the interesting reason for the abdominal pain is irritable bowel syndrome irritable bowel syndrome from the name itself we can find out that's what is this disease irritable when how we are irritable like when our tens you are getting tension your mind is irritable what will happen if you are like irritable you if you are tensed your heart should beat like only 72 times per minute but what will happen that will heat feet fast like he will feel for 100 times same way irritable bowel syndrome will what is that means like see here the stomach has to like with the one minute it will be go for the peristalsis eight minutes eight times per minutes the small intestine will go for the constriction 12 times per minutes the large intestine will go for two times per minutes if that's a normal phenomena if there is a irritable bowel syndrome that means if you are tensed or something what will happen not for all the patient some patient this bowel large and intest small intestine instead of 12 times it will go for 15 times 20 times for the mobilization that is like peristalsis if the large intestine instead of two times it's go for four to five times what will happen you will go for a like immediately whenever you having a foot you will plan you will go for a diarrhea you will go for a loose stool you will go like you will be running around the bathrooms so whenever like you are want to go out from like you are getting ready going out like that time you will feel like you want to go to the bathroom so whenever you are do want to do some walk suddenly you will feel like you'll getting a loose stool these are the signs and symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome because whenever our mind is not the, like good with the tension you will feel some uncomfortable and abdominal cramping and like floating like abdomen is like floating that is the irritable bowel syndrome is associated with sometime fever and white like us are bleeding now coming to the ninth reason kidney stones in this condition the pain is usually begin in the back or side and radiating around the front moving down to the groin or vulva and testicles you may also have a persistent urge to, urge to urination because see what is the kidney here right side kidney it's a left side kidney 
and you have the ureter. Then you have the bladder and penis or vulva. So these are the kidney. When kidneys are present behind, like in the lumbar region and the tubes are coming forward here and then there is a bladder above the pelvis and then urination like you will be have the urethra. So when there is a stone is passing out here and coming down here and obstructing here, you will be having a pain starting from the back radiating to the pelvis. So that is the main symptoms you may have when there is an infection, you may have fever, chills, rigors as well as abdominal pain, small absorption disorder. It's a tenth reason that the intestines are sensitive to dietary protein such as the gluten found on wheat and other grains may result in abdominal pain, floating, gas and diarrhea. A common malabsorption disorder is lactulose intolerance caused by the inability to digest the sugar in milk that is lactose. See, there are two, three person here. One like each and everybody will be having a food in soft. They will be having a prota, chicken, but one of the person may be only tolerating that food. They will be having a milk. Both of three of the people will be having a, one of the people won't tolerate the milk. This is the intolerance. That's a mal absorption syndrome. That patient is sensitive to such a some, some of type, some type of the proteins. So that is intolerance that we can say. That. The peptic ulcer is a 11th reason for the abdominal pain. The it's most important reason for the abdominal pains. The, now the generation is have the most popular reason for the abdominal pain is the peptic ulcer or gastritis. The pain is growing and often located in the upper abdomen between the navel and breast bones. Between the navel and breast bones. When patients are saying they in between the chest they have the pain or like there is a, something like some sort of heaviness is there that means it's coming from your stomach. It's generally worse when the stomach is empty and tend to flat during the sleep. Eating temporarily relieves the pain. You may have black or bloody stool or vomiting. See, this is the reason why the food is reducing your pain. Means when your stomach, that's always per day around 1200 to 1500 ml of acid is secreting. So, when you are like, there are so many reasons, we'll be seeing this like, or, like uh, on more episode, the whole reason of peptic ulcer and gastritis. So, whenever there is a secretion, this 1200 to 1500 ml of secretion is higher than that, 2000 ml somewhere. There's so many reasons to that, do that. That whenever the secretion is increasing, you will be having the gastritis problem or the, your ulcer is more worsened. So, whenever there is food is going inside, what will happen? Then it's, it will neutralize the acid. So, you will be thinking the pain is coming down. So, whenever your empty stomach is there, the pain is more, you, are, you can consider this is a ulcer pain. And there is a chest pain or like you have the in between the chest, like there is a something like foreign body sensation that also coming from your stomach. Singles, there is nothing but herbis swaster. The symptoms may begin as a itching or burning tingling or knife like pain on one side of your abdomen. The pain typically wrap around from spine following the nerve pathway. One to five days later, grouping of blister appear in the same location. You can see there is a herpes zoster. It's a viral infection. The pain, will, the patient will be saying that's acute pain. Like it's not tolerating pain. It's from, it's starting from back and radiating to the front. It's typically other all other pains will start in the abdomen and go back like pancreatitis and other thing. Whenever there is a patient is saying that stool pain will be radiating from back to front, that is one is the kidney stones or renal stones or uretic stones or the blisters. That is due to the herpes zoster that will be starting from spine. It will follow the nerve root and come to the anterior part of the abdomen. So after like initially the it started with the pain. And after two to three days or five days, it will be you will be seeing if there is a blister formation on your abdominal walls. So that says the herpes zoster pain. So now we completed around 12 reasons for the abdominal pain. 
in future we will be going through the each and every signs and symptoms of disease process like this 12 reason what are the appendicitis what is pancreatitis what is like like uh, irritable bowel syndrome what is inflammatory bowel disease each and everything will be going through the different pathway thank you very much